Why hello! Welcome to my channel. My name is Talia and I have decided to make a little tutorial video for you. This year, the summer of 2020, I decided to make my very own mermaid tail because I have been wanting to be a mermaid since I can remember and this is the closest way I can get to that. So here she is, my beautiful tail, very functional, a zipper for where the monofin goes in. Since it was my first tail, second if you count this one, but I did not make that one, my mother did, and it was very lovely. I decided to put on as many decorative fins as I could just to distract from any wrinkles that might occur because it is cloth. I'm very excited to try her out. I have not been able to yet because I have not had an opportunity to, but hopefully because it's the new year, I will be able to this year when it starts to get warmer or if I brave the wilderness and go to a local pool. <laughs> Let's make a thumbnail real quick. Let's get started. Designing. I started off making some digital sketches of fluke ideas, looking at all those thousands of mermaid pictures I had saved and all that. A few of these are straight up trace drawings of people who sell tails. I only use them for inspiration. Don't be that jerk who steals someone else's designs, please. Once I figured out the fluke design I liked, I did a digital painting with dorsal, hip, ankle, and calf fins. Oh, and the knees. I wanted to add decorative fins because I felt that would really help distract from the cloth and make it look a little bit more real. Then I made a life-size drawing on paper. Didn't really measure or anything, I just traced my body and threw on some fins so I could picture it better. Made two different fluke ideas, because I, I hadn't quite decided yet, and I ended up liking the one with the long tendrils better. Materials! Gotta get a monofin. I used 1.5mm neoprene and Permisa Aqua Fabric ink. You need a sewing machine, white thread, sewing scissors, lots of sewing pens, and paint brushes. Also a water cup and paper towel to rinse and dry your brushes, but we'll get to that later. Also, you need a 24 inch zipper, but the size will depend on the size of the monofin you have. You'll need a similarly colored zipper to the finished design. I ended up buying a bulk of like 50 zippers cause that was the only kind I could find with the color and size I needed. So <sighs> now I have so many zippers, but it's okay cause I ended up using one for a dress I made just last month. I got this monofin on Amazon. Fits all right, comes with some socks, swims well. I have had one of the buckles fall off while I was just holding it without it clipped shut or anything, so gotta be aware of that because I almost lost it in a lake. I ordered the neoprene and paint. Barely had enough yellow. I could have gotten a larger size, but it, it ended up working out. I probably should have gotten some red as well for the flesh tone because I ended up using a little bit of acrylic paint and mixing it in with the fabric ink. It worked, but it was a little bit stiffer than I would have liked, so I made sure to test it on some scrap cloth and rinse it a few times to make sure it stayed, and it did. Pattern making time. I laid out the sketched mermaid tail that I made earlier, and I laid out some fresh paper so that I could draw a more accurate and clean looking one. I made two mirrored drawings for the front and back of each fin, and make sure you leave a little bit extra on the ends for the sewing hem. I measured myself more accurately to make a more accurate paper model with new paper, drew horizontal lines down my legs and measured them, you know, with like an actual marker. I'd I drew on my skin so that I could make sure I had the measuring tape in the right place. I measured around the small of my waist, hips, thighs, knees, calves, and ankles. I then laid on the paper and marked where the lines are, just put, you know, a little dot, and that way I can put the measuring tape where it needed to be and make a more accurate drawing. Take half of the measurement and draw a straight line across the paper of the half measurement. So the seam will go right down the side of my legs. I made a front and back and laid the fin pattern pieces on, marking where I would eventually sew them. Sewing! I put the pattern pieces on the cloth and I puzzled them together so that I could use as little neoprene as I possibly could and not waste any of it. I made sure the main fin pieces were laid out accurately, laying them on top of each other right sides out so I knew they fit together, because sometimes even if you fold the papers in half and get a symmetrical design, it doesn't really work out that way, especially if it's just hand drawn. 
I cut out small fins first, so if I messed up, I could just cut out another small fin instead of the entire tail. I drew a faint red outline where I was supposed to sew. I made sure to do a slightly wavy line where the fin wouldn't have a bone or a stiff edge to make it look a little bit more organic. Pin together and sew inside out. Leave open the part that will be sewed to the tail and turn right side out. Sew any detailed lines for looks and for flattening the fin together. Just a little tip here, need to turn something skinny and dumb inside out, use a chopstick, it's the best. I accidentally sewed too close to the edge, so the insides were spilling out a bit here. I took some thread and just hand sewed it over to patch it up. Thought maybe I could paint a little scar there or something if it was a little too noticeable. Here's a dang picture of what that little knee fin looked like when it was done. Look at it! It looks great. And time for the main fin. Make sure to mark where you need to put drainage holes, the zipper, and leave open any gaps where you might have extra fins. I pinned around the fluke, leaving the zipper area open and tested how the monofin would fit. Oh, really quick. I wanted to say that I didn't sew the fins here. I waited till the back and front were sewed together, which made it a little bit hard using the sewing machine on the fins closest to the knees. So I ended up hand sewing a few on. If you want to sew all the fins on with the sewing machine, do it now. I would not wait till the tail is sewn together because it was difficult. But make sure you just measure from the center so that it fits perfectly. I, I knew I was going to take in a lot on the sides, so I sewed them on later. I pinned it all together, leaving the zipper open, and I tried it on. It's hard to tell how well it fits at this point. This is why I ended up sewing the fins on later, because it was just too long, and I trimmed it down a lot at the top. I sewed the main tail together, leaving the top open, and any part open if the fins go inside the seam. So in this case, the calf side fins, the zipper, and drainage holes. Tried it on, pinned it, sewed it to fit. I ended up needing to adjust it a few times, so just keep doing it until it fits. Pin where the zipper would start and end to make sure the monofin would fit. I thought I would need a 20 inch zipper, but when I pinned it, I found a 24 inch zipper would work much better. Get the zipper you need, pin it in, sew it in. If you don't know how to sew in a zipper, I would recommend watching an instructional video because I'm not explaining that. Use a zipper, but and just be really careful and use a lot of pins. At this point, you may sew in any seam fins. Hold fins up to your hips and knees and wherever you want them. Measure from the seam and pin them in while you're wearing it. I sewed them so they were flopped inward, so when they're relaxed, pointing outward, you don't see the seam. I also hand stitched the trim cloth to the fin so it doesn't show quite as much. At this point, I sewed little lines up from the bottom to help the monofin stay in place, but it still pulled a little bit, so I ended up changing it. I'll explain that a little bit later. Him the top. Fold down to where you want it. I had mine about two inches above my belly button. Sew across with a stretch stitch. I don't know if you need a hem. Might work without. I didn't need an elastic band either, so just do it how you feel. I tried it on again to make sure everything was all good. Rolled on the floor a little. The very last thing I did was add some cloth to fill the long tendrils at the bottom and to add some extra cushion where the monofin rested. Next time I just not trim the seams when cutting the seams off, I, I would just leave them there and let them do their thing because I ended up just sewing on new hems. Painting time! It's painting time. After making sure it all fits, I mixed colors into sealable containers. This is where the digital drawing comes in handy because I have a little reference that I can use and I don't have to guess what colors I need. To make my skin tone, I painted on my stomach and tried to match it as best I could with the colors I had. I ended up needing to use some red acrylic paint, which was a little scary at first, but before painting it on the tail, I made sure to test down a scrap piece to make sure it didn't wash off or get gross in the water. It was a little bit stiff, but it didn't wash off, so I was happy with it. Before painting anything, I tested each color on a scrap piece of cloth and made sure I liked the colors when they dried because they looked dang neon and weird. Like, look at that. It's, look how neon that looks. I had to test and let it dry overnight to make sure I really did like the colors. Here's the fresh paint versus the dried. Once I had all my colors, I started with the skin tone at the top, painting a little bit on the inside of him in case it folds down a little when I wear it then went on to painting the lightest part of the belly. Going around the fins as I went, I went on with the next shade for the edges and tried to mix them and blend them together. Once I got the base down on the top, I moved to the fluke, doing the darker colors on the edges. I painted the same tone as the belly between the lines on the fluke. I went back and forth on painting the light of the fluke and the darker lines so I would have the paint blend a little bit. I left that out to dry and started on the back the next day. 
I started with the darker color on the back instead of the lightest like the front. As I made my way down, I painted a little darker shade around the base of the fins. After finishing the fluke, let that dry overnight. Time for the scales. On the front for the scales, I did a slightly shade darker than the color underneath it. There's the scales done all the way down. I feel like it looks really good. I was really excited when this was done. It really made it look more interesting. For the scales on the sides of the fluke, I decided to do a gradient of slightly smaller scales as I went down. Now for the pattern. I decided I didn't like the dots as much as before, so I decided to redesign it. To this one, I kept the back the same as before because I already liked how it looked. Once I was happy with the new designs, I got more paper out. I traced the tail on a big strip of paper and drew where I wanted the splotches to be. I cut out the pieces with an X-Acto knife, then folding it over and tracing the negative space to get a mirrored version. I laid all the cut out pieces on the tail where I wanted to make sure it all looked good. Once I was happy with that, I decided to use a small white colored pencil to trace over them. Make sure you do very thin lines at this time because I did a little bit thicker lines and the white kind of stayed on the cloth. I did the same to the flute, drawing, cutting out, then tracing. When the front is done, I did the same to the back. Once both sides are traced, I started painting. I believe I chose the darkest paint for the pattern bits, starting from the ankles and working my way up. Then I did the pattern on a fluke. Here's the back, compared to the front. As you can see, I like the one with the pattern better. Thank goodness, because I already painted it on. After it dried, I did the fluke on the front. Now that I have all the lines filled in, I just need to connect the sides and make them look a little more natural. Ta-da! I stuffed the inside with an old towel so it rounded out while I did this. When that's all dried, I did the fins, starting with the calf and back fins. With the floppy fins, I'd paint one side and then lay them on newspaper until they were dry so they wouldn't paint the tail beneath when set down. I added a few spots here and there on the fins. Once I felt like I was done, I did a quick check to patch up some places that the white cloth was showing through, like the seams. I got my heat gun out and ran it on low across the entire tail. I hung my beautiful finished tail up in the safety of this bathroom to fully dry and set. And here I am testing it out in the bath to make sure the paint didn't immediately just leak off and paint a pool green. While doing this, the white marks I made to trace the pattern pieces on just lifted off the tail and were nowhere to be seen again. And lastly, hanging her up to dry over the shower in some beautiful lighting. So, here's the first concept, well the second one, to the final. It's fun to see ideas become reality. Thank you so much for watching my video. Hopefully I'll be making some more because I do like to bake and sew and make things and I would love to share them with you if you're interested and consider subscribing. Consider dinging that bell. Be <laughs> consider <sub> <laughs> ha. I hope you liked this video and I will see you soon. Bye! Also, a special thanks to Tours from YouTube. I don't know if I'm going to put this in the video or not because she's not really related to this at all, but she really inspired me to to start really sewing and and she makes video editing look so easily. After watching her videos, she made it seem so fun and easy to make something like this that I decided to do it and I had a lot of fun making this and it's all it's she really inspired me a lot so if you if you don't know who she is her link to her youtube and instagram is in the description and i really hope that you find her videos as inspiring as i did because they are really they're really great and she's really funny take the hair off the dang wall Oh, hello there. I didn't see you there. Mm, I can't say there twice like that. Oh, that's good. And tape on my sock. I don't think anybody knows how to end a video properly, so... Bye.